Isuzu's in a really fast car. One of the fastest seen in the hybrid era. Red Bull has already won two races of the two and is already looking to have a very dominant season. Will this continue or will they fall back? Will that lead crumble or will it just be even larger by the end of the year? I got a lot of things to talk about with that Red Bull team and why I think their advantage will dwindle and we will get a 2023 title fight. Before I get into all that, thank you all so much for subscribing and liking. I love all of you. You guys give me the support that anybody could really dream of and thank you all for just being there, commenting and really supporting the content on the channel. And if you're not subscribed and liked, please do. I upload almost every single day and try to keep you guys updated on the latest stuff and really give you my opinion on everything. So if you guys enjoy the content, subscribe. And let's get into this Red Bull video. Okay, so the RB19, probably the car that is really spinning everybody's head this year. The car that is practically almost a second ahead of everybody on the field, with the exception of one little team called Aston Martin. They have pretty much dominated the first two races and if it weren't for a couple of fallacies like the reliability they would probably be even more ahead than we can even imagine but do they have a lot of disadvantages coming yes they do and a lot of things are coming out that is rumored that i will put to rest right now and other things that i just think are just false accusations to make about the red bull team first of all before i start talking about the really in-depth stuff about red bull we gotta congratulate and see, we gotta give them their flowers as people say. This Red Bull car is insane. Like it is literally like a W11. It is stupid fast. It's straight line speed is insane. It has like practically no drag. The car is just phenomenal and it's gotta be awarded. I mean like even Total Wolf talks about it and I love that Total Wolf even mentioned it. it it's hard work to become number one in F1. You are deserving of it if you manage it. It is pathetic to almost assume that Red Bull does not deserve this spot. Oh, the rules should be changed. The rules weren't changed from 2014 to really 2021 for a long period of time. Sure, they may have stopped Mercedes in a couple of different upgrades to get them a little bit closer, but it's not like they did that much. Sure, maybe you can add a couple of things. I mean, guess what? Last year they added the technical directive to put it even closer to racing and really like take away that porpoising and look what happens. Red Bull gets ahead. And I will mention that technical directive that came last year for the Red Bull squad that we see right now, because it does play a very important part as to why they are so quick right now. Hamilton calls this the fastest car he has seen since really being a race car driver. He says his cars were not this fast even when they were at their fastest. Well, I mean, data proves that the 2014 and even the 16 Mercedes were ridiculously fast in comparison to the rest of the field. And also data proves that even the cars that start off really quickly towards the end of the year fall off and never really have that huge advantage and don't keep that huge advantage for a very long period of time. I mean, we all know the Braun GP story as to how the team essentially went from a team that was probably expected to be between 7th to 10th in the constructors to going to a first place and winning was a guy called Jensen Button. They had a crazy innovative idea, which was the blown diffuser and really what made that team and what that team is now Mercedes. What I'm trying to say is though, they started that season way ahead of everybody else. And I mean, it wasn't even comparable. Within five to six races, every team was almost caught up and copied that idea. Now on the grid, we can only tell that two teams so far are great at not shredding their tires. That is Red Bull and Aston Martin. So clearly they have a step ahead of everybody and run the car a lot lower than everybody. The car is insanely quick on its straights. That is one thing that Aston Martin does not have. That Red Bull has no drag. It has learned how to eliminate drag. Any other car on the grid, I guess Ferrari is a pretty quick car in the straights and so is the Haas. So I guess that concept works for what they're doing but it isn't necessarily the best concept clearly because they're really not there with the Red Bulls. And with a driver like Max Verstappen and even Checo Perez showing off that the car is insanely quick, it's hard to think that this team could dwindle, but so many things could happen in this year for it to dwindle. But right before I get into that, I wanted to talk about that technical directive. Last year in Spa, 
I mean, if we're being honest, it was Mercedes that really complained about the porpoising and that it was an issue and the ride heights all needed to be raised. So when all the ride heights were raised, Red Bull did something that I guess we really didn't even know would come into play nowadays and I don't see many people talking about. They ran a different floor on Perez in comparison to Max. Max was the championship title contender, so they kept Max with the car with the lowered floor and the one that was not going to be the one that was for the 2023 season, because now we know the millimeters are raised now on the ride heights. Well, Checo was running that car higher and had that floor since Spa. So essentially, Red Bull in 2022 gained so much data off of Checo and running the new floor that is the floor that they run now, and sure, they probably added like a whole bunch of things to even upgrade that floor so much more, but they were able to obtain so much data off of the car just running higher and adjusting to these new regulations, which is why I think Red Bull has just nailed it on the die in comparison to others. Another team that is hot in this year's new uh, Formula One cars of 2023 is Aston Martin. And yet again, they're the same team Last year, they had to run their floor a lot higher because their car porpoised a lot. So yet again, they were learning a lot of data off of a higher ride height. That's why now they can lower the ride height and have a better floor. I, I think that the 2022 season was very important on developing how that floor was actually essentially made if you were able to gather that data. A team like Mercedes tried running their floor as low as possible, so they weren't getting, a, I, I guess, accurate numbers for 2023. That's why we see the W14 being so kind of weird and where this will all come into play in the lead will dwindle first of all i think that max and checo have kind of this like little beef ongoing sure they're teammates they want to beat each other they want to be competitive with each other but i don't think to me teammates communicate like that and that paranoia of max trying to overtake perez by the end of the saudi arabian grand prix is what gives me that hint last year in brazil we saw what was the issue and everybody knows the problem between what happened in brazil Max didn't let him pass through. Then we also know the rumor of Monaco. I don't really need to bring those two stories up because if you keep up with F1, you should know that that is a big story that goes around with really Perez and Max Verstappen and what has kind of hinted at their relationship being a little torn in comparison to a season like 2021 where essentially Perez won the title for Max. Not really. Max still won it off of driving, but Perez helped a big time. If You get what I'm saying with that insane defense. Well, that relationship is a bit torn, and if Pettis can keep up his form and kind of what he did in Saudi Arabia, sure, if Max was to qualify himself legitly without the actual engine issue, would he have gotten first? I mean, it's debatable, probably, but maybe Pettis would have pulled off a wild one. I mean, last year we had Pettis actually get a pole position and qualify Max a couple times higher than actually Max himself in tracks like Monaco. I mean, sure, we got the crash, but and Saudi Arabia was his biggest pull and his only pull up until then. Other than that though, this car could be potentially almost maxed out to its capacity. This Red Bull is so far ahead of everybody that we could be seeing a car that won't be gaining as much on its upgrades. First of all, because of its ATR time, and second of all, because the car has been worked on for so long since the 2022 period, this car is, it feels like a maxed out my team car. Essentially, that's kind of like what the car is right now. So. It could either gain marginal gains while other teams are gaining huge strides and actually trying to catch up. Aston Martin is one of those teams looking to do that, Mercedes potentially, and Ferrari if their actual concept works. So the ATR time will come into play, especially in the second half of the season. They will lose a lot of time and really they will have to make decisions that are pretty crucial to actually being able to upgrade the car and whether the car will be gaining five tenths or will it be gaining 0.005. I mean, it's all really relative, and by having more time, essentially makes it easier for you to have better upgrades. So the time is ticking, as the thumbnail actually entails. Red Bull have to be quick, and this first half of the season is very important for them. If they are not on top of it, if they are not on their A game, it will be a tough time for Red Bull to actually make a car competitive enough to stay this much ahead for the whole entire season. I do believe a comeback is coming and brewing and 2023 will be a great season with a whole bunch of fight between a whole bunch of other teams. Can they catch up to Red Bull? I do think so. And I do think that Red Bull 
will have a tough time being able to make this car as good as it is even more than it already is. I mean, let me know your thoughts down below. We had this Red Bull 1-2 in Bahrain and Jeddah. Am I expecting in Australia? Probably. I did hear about rain though, and that could go to a team like Aston Martin very well. So it'll, be, it'll make it a lot more interesting. Please leave your thoughts down below. Please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.